I will suggest that they form uh, all the uh, traders. They form a they form form a consortium, and uh, and the government should help in the help in the marketing of the of the leather products. And, <coughs> and also, uh, and also the and also the linkage of the of the manufacturers with the institutions who have expertise in the. In, in the design, I mean, in, in the latest uh, uh, latest fashion in the market. So, so that thing needs to be institutionalized uh, so that Agra Agra can produce the world class uh, uh, leather products. So, I think these are the steps that can be taken. Your work in power grid. Yes, what are the major challenges uh, for the power sector in India? And do you think India could become self-sufficient? And what are the current trends in the power sector? Uh, moving from coal, thermal to yes. other areas. So talking about the challenges, so firstly in case of generation India India has achieved the power surplus status. However, the challenges lie in case of the access of, of the power to the uh, rural poor. So the so I mean in case of in case of uh, uh, discounts, they have a uh, they have a total uh, total debt of around 4.6 lakh crore so it is it, it is one of the major challenge and and in case of transmission uh, systems the uh, high atnc losses and the uh, high transmission and, and distribution uh, losses of, of around 26 percent it is uh, one of the major challenges and as far as the future prospects are concerned sir uh, india india plans to increase the share of the renewable and of the renewable energy sources and according to the national electricity plan so we need to india plans to increase the share of, of the renewable energy to about 40 percent in the next 10 years from from about from about 20 percent in in the present times so i see i see a future of the power sector, it lies with the renewable energy sources. So, so we need to invest in our in our power transmission and and the power transmission infrastructure, so, so that it can integrate that amount of that amount of renewable energy into the grid. So, so there lies the future. I think we should also increase. Uh the nuclear energy share in the power. This is uh, the nuclear energy. It, uh, presently, it contributes around uh, around 0.2 percent in our installed installed capacity. However, India has planned to increase it, it to about 63 uh, gigawatts by 2032. And as it is a form. Uh, as it is a non-carbon emitting form of form of form of energy, so it is it is crucial to increase its share. Uh, 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 and given uh, uh, we also have to achieve the targets uh, related to INDCs. So I think nuclear energy it will also play an important role in India's energy energy mix in future. But. Uh, what do you see in the rest of the world, in Japan, United States, and the UK? Are they trying to increase nuclear energy share, or are they trying to reduce it? Sir, after the after certain disasters like the Fukushima disaster, in in case of Japan, some countries are trying to reduce their dependence on the on the nuclear nuclear energy 
however the challenges for india are are different uh, uh, from the developed countries uh, so i think uh, we need to invest in the uh, uh, invest invest in the safe designs of the of the nuclear uh, reactor and make them full proof uh, so that uh, such incidents uh, don't occur and and also uh, and also we need to strengthen the legal and and the regulatory uh, framework uh, related to the nuclear power so if, if these things are strengthened i think uh, 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 i think i mean we can we can go for the nuclear energy thanks there is no harm uh, your profile mentions you were a mess manager in bhu yes sir so how was that experience tell us something about that yes sir sir i, I was the i was the mess manager in bhu for 2 years yes, and it and it was a it was a very enriching experience as i learned the uh, as i learned the, uh, all the uh, all the post deco activities of of the of the management including the planning organizing and and all the activities of the of the management and it gave me wide exposure and also i learned to balance the uh, various competing uh, uh, demands from various students so it was a really good experience uh, in some uh, hyderabad university there was this uh, beef festival organized by certain groups so and there's this controversy on beef ban right so any such issues you faced in bhu or what's your take on that issue of beef ban so although i did not face any any issues related to beef in my during my tenure however uh, uh, in our case uh, i mean the uh, the days for the non veg food they were uh, they were defined and we also took into account the sensibilities of certain uh, of certain uh, religions uh, by not uh, by not providing the uh, non veg food example on tuesdays so i took into account all those all, all those considerations so i do not face any such issue do you think beef should be banned like by the government so beef ban uh, sir as per as per my knowledge it's a state it it depends on the states so it is i think it it is their uh, it is their uh, i mean a discretion according to the food choices of their people so i i think it it should be left to the states to decide you were talking about highlighting the cultural aspects of agra right so what what exactly can you elaborate on that so for example the agra agra kharana has been from the famous kharanas as far as the as far as the kathak is concerned and and also for the and agra agra was also the seat for the hindustani of music and and many poets like amir like amir khusro they have their linkages with agra so i think I, we need to highlight all the all the literary and also the uh, tangible and intangible cultural aspects of agra <coughs> have you read today's newspaper uh, yes sir i have seen the headlines okay, there is a uh, one uh, scholar mr tel tambade who has been arrested uh, any idea what is the controversy regarding that anand tel tambade is a dalit scholar activist uh, sir i am not exactly aware of the issue but uh, uh, i think he has been arrested from pune and uh, But sir, I am not aware of the details. Are you aware of the Bhim Koregaon controversy? There was some violence in Bhim Koregaon. Yes, sir. What is that about? Can you please highlight that. Sir, I really, I am not aware of the details. It ultimately, it ultimately, you have discovered that some people were planning to kill the prime minister. Sir, I am not aware of this controversy. There's recently also been an amendment to the SCST 
Prevention of Atrocities Act, yes. right? And there has been some controversy regarding that. There was a Supreme Court judgment. Are you aware of that? Uh, yes, sir. Can you please elaborate? <coughs> so recently, uh, Supreme Court has, uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, gave the judgment that the anticipatory uh, uh, bail in case of the SCFT Act, it, 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 it can be uh, provided on, and uh, <coughs> and the government has has amended the act uh, and it has uh, restored the earlier earlier case that the uh, anticipated bail <coughs> cannot be uh, uh, it, it cannot be uh, provided and it has also strengthened the uh, I mean the, the earlier earlier clauses like uh, uh, like there has to be uh, like an investigation by an officer of the rank of DSP I mean the uh, the preliminary investigation need not be required, so it has amended the SCST Act. So you think the government was right in overturning the Supreme Court decision practically on this issue? So we need to take the holistic holistic aspects into 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 account. The I mean, in some cases, the SCST uh, they face the the atrocities and also uh, uh, we, we need to take into account the uh, account the uh, I mean the misuse of the act uh, uh, it has also been uh, widely reported in media so uh, I think it is the government's uh, discretion to uh, uh, to amend the act however the uh, there has to be proper uh, guidelines and of and also the proper safeguards uh, so that this act uh, it, 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 i mean the misuse of the act it can be it, it can be avoided so uh, we need to balance these two perspectives okay in the interim budget what are some special features are the main highlights so the main highlights of, of the interim, interim budget includes that the budget ha, has provided for a, a income support scheme for the farmers uh, for the farmers uh, to the tune of six thousand rupees per year, and and for the middle class uh, salaried class it has it has uh, provided for that. Uh, uh, that the taxable income up to up to up to five lakh uh, five lakh rupee uh, there won't be any income tax and uh, it has also it has also provided uh, for the uh, welfare of the informal uh, sector workers uh, and in the form of a special in scheme uh, uh, for the uh, I mean for the pension in, uh, for the informal sector. For the, so it has, I think it is an all-inclusive budget document. If you have an income of uh, seven lakh rupees per annum, how can you make it tax-free? You don't have to pay tax. So by investing in the in the in the in the specific schemes and uh, uh, up to uh, up to one point five lakh income, it can be. Apart from the five lakh, in addition to the five lakh, it can be made uh, tax free. Which, which are those schemes? Other specific schemes where you can invest? So, like uh, PPF and the insurance in, insurance sector. Uh, when investing in these, uh, 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 we can get additional tax uh, deductions. What is your view about the Rafael deal? What do you think there was any underhand take dealings or it was clear? So the profit deal has been under has been under the controversy. So I think uh, I mean I may not be the uh, I, I mean the, I, I may not have uh, the proper knowledge to comment on the on the issues. But uh, I think uh, the government uh, needs to 
uh, needs to make the dealing more transparent and the facts have to be in 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 the public domain so that any any a suspicion of the opposition it can be it can be dealt with so i think it's a it's a deal for the national interest of india and however the dealing should also it should also uh, adhere to the standards of, of of transparency so i think that is the way forward How far do you need to go? Scheduled to be at twelve. Yes. You reached here at twelve fifteen. Yes. How far do you think punctuality is important in individuals' life? So punctuality is an important aspect of personality, and also of of on also it shows it shows the it shows the I mean. The discipline and the seriousness of a person. So I think it is it is very important uh, to be punctual, and, and especially in case of the civil servants and the, and the government officers, it is it is considered as a it, it it can be considered as as one of the fundamental values. Where do you rate yourself on that on scale of zero one to one hundred? Uh, sir, in, sir, in this case, I would say that I was uh, I was not. Uh, Punctual due to some exigencies, so I would uh, I would say that I was uh, I was not uh, very punctual in this case, but uh, uh, I, but in my life I have followed the principles of punctuality, and also in my training I am undergoing training in the Indian Forest Services, so uh, there our schedule is very tight, so. And the punctuality has been has been the focus of the training. What other values in life do you practice? So the values includes the includes the human values like honesty, honesty, empathy, empathy, compassion. But these are obviously, I mean. These are uh, uh, practiced by me in my life, and also in case of uh, I, I am also a civil servant as I'm as I'm in the Indian Forest Service. So I I also follow the uh, I also follow the code of conduct in, uh, of the civil service, and it, it includes the values like integrity, uh, objectivity, transparency, and so all these values I I, I have inculcated in me. Let's sir ask you that uh, you come from uh, Agra and what is historically important about it. Yes. And you said this was the dynasty of the capital of the Mughals. Yes. What was the reason, the uh, political reason for which Mughals chose Agra as the capital city? Sir, initially after the after the battle of panipat the babar defeated ibrahim lodi so uh, agra was centrally uh, no uh, centrally located and uh, it had a uh, it, it has it had a very good connectivity with the other areas so i think due to its central location it was chosen as the as the capital Sorry, what 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 has its vicinity to Rajasthan and Rajputana had to do with uh, the decision to make it as a capital city? Because it was very close to Rajasthan, which is the pride of water resources. Yes. And anywhere, any for any city, capital city to flourish, uh, such facility should be plenty. Yet Mughals chose Agra as the capital city. What politics? And what connection it had with Rajasthan? No, sir, I'm not aware of the exact <coughs> political reason. Okay. Uh, you were talking about uh, nuclear energy as an alternative. Yes. And you said that it is only after a few, uh, Fukushima Japanese <coughs> uh, 
accident that people have started looking yes. away from the planet. Yes. Have you heard of Three Maya accident? Yes, sir. It was in, it was in uh, Ukraine. Three Maya was not in Ukraine. Sorry, sir. Three Maya Island was in US. Yes. Ukraine also had a very big uh, accident. What caused that accident? Ukraine accident. Sir, I'm not exactly aware. Yeah. <coughs> you know that the government of India at the moment the thrust is towards solar. Yes, sir. Rather than nuclear or any other uh, alternative resources. We have to place this initiative of the government that we should go solar rather than uh, hydro or wind or uh, any other energy source. Sir, as per the studies, India and as per the studies by the Ministry of Renewable Energy, India has a solar energy potential of, 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 seven, of 750 gigawatts and, uh, and the energy of potential in case of wind power it is only 100 150 gigawatts so i think the government is right in its focus on on the solar energy as the solar potential of and as india india being a tropical country the uh, the solar potential of india is highest in case of the in case of all the all the renewable energies but india is still going for nuclear energy also Unlike uh, the developed countries, it's constructing number of uh, nuclear reactors. Very recently, they are introduced in an MOU with Russia, yes, uh, who for themselves have stopped uh, developing nuclear energy, but India is still going for nuclear energy. Do you think they are uh, right in doing that? Sir, actually, the I mean, the renewable energies like solar and and wind, uh, they also have their cons. Uh, like uh, like the power uh, from the solar energy it is it is not uh, it is intermittent and it, it is also variable uh, so uh, so uh, so for promoting the stability of the grid and and to support the uh, base load uh, we also need a stable source of power so i think the nuclear energy it, it has been uh, it, it is important to, it is important to provide that stable, uh, stable source of power. So I think uh, we need both uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear energy and also the renewable sources of and energy. If I get an alternative view that uh, nuclear energy is being developed more for being a nuclear power and using the nuclear things as arsenal as deference. Uh, maybe we are more interested in developing nuclear energy rather than as a integrated component of the nuclear uh, uh, of the energy okay. economics. Yes. What do you have to say? Sir, I think uh, we need to take into account both the aspects, the energy aspects and also the and also the security aspects. And from the independence itself. Uh, we have a three-step uh, uh, nuclear program as as uh, as envisaged by Humi Jebhava. So I think uh, we also need to move forward on, on that aspect, and uh, and uh, and the security concerns are also important. Uh, so uh, I think if we are uh, developing nuclear energy, uh, uh, taking into account uh, 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 both the power and the security concerns. So I think it is a step for the national interest. Yeah, but, uh, so, <coughs> please uh, explain your take on recently 10% uh, economically backward quota. So recently there have been, uh, uh, I mean there has been debate on the, on the, on the revamp of the of the reservation policy, so I think uh, uh, it is a step in the step in the right direction, as uh, uh, as the agitation uh, from certain sections of, of the people. It has shown that the uh, that the present reservation policy has failed 
has it has its uh, it has its uh, limitations. It what is your opinion? It, it should be only for economically backward or for others also. So presently, we already have the reservation for SCSTs and and OBC um, on the on the basis of social uh, 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 I mean social uh, social backwardness and and Supreme Court has has said in its uh, various uh, uh, various judgments that the social uh, uh, social backwardness can can only be the criteria for the for the reservation. However, in case, however, uh, seeing the today's circumstances, uh, uh, I think we need changes in in that policy, and and the government's decision of of ten percent for the economically weaker sections, I think it's a step in the right direction, as as it will uh, as it will broaden the scope of of the reservation, and it. And and the and the economically uh, backward uh, sections, uh, they may also reap the benefits uh, due to is this. It, isn't it the responsibility of an individual to pass on the benefits uh, towards economically weaker section of the society? Yes, sir, it is the. Uh, I mean, in, in broad sense. We can say that individuals also have to, have to contribute, uh, 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 but so uh, basically you agree. Yes, Why uh, did you fill your form in general category? Yes, sir, individuals have to contribute, and uh, I would say that uh, uh, I was not aware that uh, even a uh, even a SC category student, he can. Uh, 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 I mean, whether he is legally permissible uh, uh, for uh, uh, appearing as uh, another Why category. Why did you join Forest Services? So, Forest Service is is, is one of the premier of all India services. Okay. So, and so, why are you willing to share now? Sir, I agree that Forest Service is 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 one of the premier of all India services, and it offers the diverse opportunities. Uh, however, uh, I consider that Indian Administrative Service it offers it offers more diverse opportunities. Uh, uh, for me also, I mean for the I mean for uh, for personal okay, reasons, I also don't. Sir, electrical engineering is is one of the core branches of of engineering, and uh, and our uh, and our twelfth and our twelfth class syllabus it has uh, five portions on electricity and magnetism. So I was really in, in, interested uh, uh, to study more on those aspects. So I chose electrical engineering as my branch. See, you are getting your uh, B.T.E. from IIT. Yes. Uh, government is giving various uh, subsidies for students who wish to study from IITs. Yes. Then you joined Power Grid. Okay. You are a very capable engineer who would have served society, especially in the power sector. Yes. And now you shifted to forest services. And now you are shifting to uh, surveillance. So, why this sudden change? So I think the government has invested in the in the human development, and, uh, and today uh, we need people with multiple skills and and multi uh, disciplinary aspects uh, to solve the ch uh, challenges the society is facing. So, uh, uh, so therefore, I consider uh, these shifts as uh, as a part of uh, as a part of my learning. I mean, uh, I have learned electrical engineering, and then I have also learned. Forestry, geology, and also the public administration for the civil services. So I have developed. A, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, my learning horizons have expanded. So I, I think I will be able to better 
uh, amusement knowledge okay. in case of civil services. Wait, no, one last question from my side. Uh, badminton is a hobby. Yes. Is having good height uh, is advantageous in badminton? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is advantageous ah, in some aspects. So, uh, why do Chinese players are very short in height? Keep on winning various titles, especially uh, world championship rankings, historically. Yes, sir, it, uh, sir, it, uh, sir, it, is, it is due to the very efficient system of, of training that, uh, uh, that is designed by the Chinese. And the Chinese have a straight run. I mean, straight back uh, a training system in which they focus on the individual players, and they also have uh, higher higher standards of training and higher standards of fitness. So, so that so those aspects have, have overcome the limitations due to the height. So, I think uh, due to these reasons, they have excelled in that field. Okay, thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.